Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to do is show you how you can integrate something like this. It's a fractional type. Now whenever I get fractional types the first thing I would always want to check out is this basic rule that we should already know and that is if you've got an integral of a fraction and let's suppose we've got f of x in the denominator and if you were to differentiate this this would be f dash of x and you're integrating this with respect to x this is a standard result we should know it as I say it's the natural log of the mod of f of x plus a constant of integration plus c and it's also true that if you were to differentiate this and find that there was a constant let's call it a multiplied by f dash of x okay then this would be a times the natural log of the mod of f of x plus c so first of all check that out here is that the case well if you differentiate the denominator here you're going to get 2x minus 4 and clearly if you had 2x minus 4 it's not the same as 3x and there's no number no constant that you could multiply this by to get 3x so it's not one of these types well certainly doesn't appear to be at the moment anyway so how do we do this well the next thing we look at is does the denominator factorize and it does so let's factorize it and we'll see where we go from there so we'll have the 3x there and this quadratic expression then splits up into two brackets there'll be an x minus 5 and an x plus 1 and that will have dx on the end. Okay, so we've now factorized the denominator. So what? Well, the th point is that when you get something like this and you can factorize the denominator, we can split this up into partial fractions. So, hopefully your partial fractions are okay. If not, just look on my tutorials for working with partial fractions. And uh, we'll do it here anyway. 3x over x minus 5, x plus 1. Now, these are linear factors, the x minus 5 and x plus 1. And so this is identical to a constant, let's call it a, over the first linear factor, x minus 5, plus another constant, b, over the other linear factor x plus 1. And there's various methods of solving these. What I tend to do is multiply both sides now by x minus 5 and x plus 1 and so that's going to give me 3x is identical to a multiplied by x plus 1 and then b multiplied by x minus 5. As I say if you're not sure of this just go on my website look under partial fractions in the tutorial index now we need to work out a and b so what we can do is select x to be minus 1 it will make this bracket 0 and take out this term so when x equals minus 1 we have 3 times minus 1 which is going to be minus 3 and that's going to equal well, minus 1, minus 5, here is minus 6, so it's minus 6b. And if we divide both sides by minus 6, b is going to be minus 3 over minus 6, which is a half. So b equals 1 half. And to get a, I make this bracket 0, so I let x be 5. So when x is 5, okay, we have 3 times 5 there. 15 in other words we therefore have 15 equals put 5 in here 5 and 1 is 6 6a so it follows from here if we divide both sides by 6 that a equals 15 over 6 and we could divide both top and bottom by 3 and that will give us 5 over 2 so what this is telling us then is that this value here 3x over x minus 5 
multiplied by x plus 1 is identical to a over x minus 5. So a was 5 over 2, so I'm going to write that as 5 over and pull the 2 down here, and that will be x minus 5. And then we've got plus b over x plus 1. b was a half, so we've got plus 1 over 2 lots of x plus 1. So we need to do this kind of thing. Let's just border that off there. OK, so let's carry on with this integral now. We've split this into partial fractions. So we can rewrite this as this. OK, now what I'm going to do is, because we've got 5 and the 2, they're constants, I'm going to pull them out the front of the integral. So we've got 5 over 2, and then we've got the integral of 1 over just the x minus 5. So we've got that one. We'll put a dx there, OK? And then we're going to integrate this one. And similarly, we're going to have 1 half out the front of the integral. A half, then you have the integral of 1 over just the x plus 1. And again, not forgetting the dx there. OK, so how do we go about integrating this? Well, it's a fraction. And as I said earlier, any time I have a fraction, I would always check out this rule here. If I differentiate the bottom, I get just 1. And that's what I've got on the top here. So this is a natural log type, the natural log of the mod of x minus 5. So what we have then is 5 over 2, then multiplied by the natural log of the mod of x minus 5. And similarly for this one, can you see that when you differentiate x plus 1, you get 1, which is the value on the top. So this is going to be plus a half multiplied by the natural log of the mod of x plus 1. And then we shouldn't forget the constant of integration, plus c. Now you could leave it like this, but quite often we can simplify these further by using the rules of logs. What we need to do, or what we can do, is we can see that half is a common factor here. So we could pull out half in this particular example and then write 5 multiplied by the natural log of x minus 5 and then plus the natural log of x plus 1 and then close the bracket off plus c. Now, can you remember that if you've got the natural log of something plus natural log of another value, it's the same as doing the log of one value multiplied by the other. But you mustn't have a number in the front for that to work. But when you've got a number in the front, we can take this up as a power. So this becomes half multiplied by the natural log of the mod of x minus 5 to the power 5, OK? And then plus the natural log of x plus 1, OK? Plus c. Better close that bracket off there. Now we have natural log plus natural log. So we can use the multiplication rule. And that gives us the natural log of the mod of x minus 5 to the power 5 times x plus 1. And we'll put a mod around that, close the bracket off, and put plus c. And basically, that's it. OK? The simplified version of your integral. You don't have to always, as I say, do that. You could leave it at that level, but it depends on the question. OK? If they ask you to simplify it further, then maybe they're looking for something like this. But nonetheless, Whenever you get a fractional integral, always check out to see, first of all, whether this rule holds. If it doesn't, then go on to ask yourself, does it factorize? And if it does, the chances are it most probably then will be a partial fraction type. OK, well, that's just one example. And uh, 
We'll do another example. You'll see another example in another one of my videos that will follow. Okay.